Community Voices. Comedy Edition. Well, hello there. Welcome to the Comic Props episode of the Community Voices Comedic Writing Workshop. My name is Katie H, and I'm your workshop host, and I'm just so happy to be here, and thank you for watching today's video. First, I, I want to address, well, I want to address the elephant in the room. I, I mean, figuratively. Okay. Anyway, I do want to point out that, yes, this workshop is no longer being hosted live. I'm going to miss the live comments, but I do want to point out that you can still chat with me in the non-live and less exciting comments below, <laughs> and I can come back at any point and say hello back to you. We just realized that over the past couple of weeks of offering these workshops that offering some non-live alternative videos when the actual workshop doesn't require live interactment, well, these types of videos they reach a whole other audience. And after experimenting with our satire episode last week, we saw a lot more participation from our viewers. So this is a workshop that people want to check out later. So we're making that accessible to people. So welcome to our new format and welcome to our new participants. Please feel free to check out the old workshops on this playlist. And if you're new today, great. Thanks for being here. So good to see ya. <laughs> there is still time to get inspired and to develop your own short piece with one of the many different comedic writing genres. And just so you know, newbies, each workshop has a new style. So today we are starting over and digging into the world of using comic props as a central focus in our driving comedic dialogue. There are many, 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 many examples of this style, and today we are going to discuss a few and get you inspired to write about your own comedic prop idea. Now, obviously, the use of props is a gigantic scope in the world of film and theater and television. This is a really important world that helps tell the stories of so many different mediums. These pieces on stage and on TV help tell the story of the character and often drive the plot of the story. And there are many, 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 many important props in just about every play that you can read. So when I talk about comic props, specifically for this workshop, I mean props that drive the comedic elements of a performative script. I'm going to share with you some classic examples so you can start to visualize what I mean. If you can think of your own, go ahead and put them in the comments below. It might help someone else visualize their own ideas for this prompt. In film, some classic comedic props that come to mind include the iconic forks and dinner rolls made famous by Charlie Chaplin. Do you remember that image of him dancing with the rolls on the table? Uh, something a little more inconspicuous, I think of Holly Golightly's two-foot-long cigarette holder in Breakfast at Tiffany's when she danced around that party and smacked different people with it. <laughs> I also think of Mary Poppins' medicine bag full of random items that just seem way too large for that bag. What a wonderful scene from my childhood that I think about all the time. <laughs> and then I think of the Grail from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This is the item that inspired the title and inspires all of the action in the very ridiculous film. And in the classic sitcom I Love Lucy, well, I Love Lucy features many episodes centered around comic props. Can you remember the Vitamita Benjamin episode or the Chocolate Factory episode? And there's one episode where they go home and visit Ethel's family and Ethel's family all think she's famous. And then all of her friends crash her performance while she's home and do all these funny things behind her while she's singing. Like they carry a tree that grows in size, comic prop. Or there's a moment where Ricky comes on stage after a sign that says man eating tiger and he just eats this little plastic figurine of a tiger. It was very funny and all centered around comic props. 
In theater, there are many, 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 many important uses for comic props. Can you tell I'm using the word many a lot? I just want to give you the idea that we're just scratching the surface of this idea. And because there's so many important uses for comic props, in theater, I'm going to jump right into the discussion that I had this week with the Old Globes prop master, David Buis. What a treat. I invited Dave on because throughout his incredible career of building props for shows, he's had just so much wonderful insight on what makes a really great comedic prop. And I'm pretty sure he's going to inspire you. So let's check out that chat right now. Hello, Dave Buis. How are you doing today? I'm great, baby. Good to be here. Thank you, you for being here. Thank you for joining me today in our exploration of comic props for this workshop. Uh, my first question for you today is, what is it about developing comic props for the Globe stage or wherever uh, that what is what is it about that process that you've enjoyed in your career? I I enjoy the challenge. So like everything that we get in our in our shop, it's always a challenge to build. But building something that can support comedy is really tricky because it's all in the timing. And so that, yeah, <laughs> that's the fun part about it. <laughs> so that's a really, I love hearing those words all in the timing. That's a really big element in writing comedy. And what I am, I, I, today I asked Dave to bring us a couple of examples of different props that have existed in different worlds that have served the purpose of moving forward the comedic storytelling of these pieces. And I believe you brought some examples in a couple of different categories. What, what are those two, what are those categories for us? Well, the, the, the way that I look at it, the two kind of categories I break it up to, um, or sometimes a prop can be funny by design and other times a prop can be just an ordinary item that draws out the comedy. So those are the, those are the two aspects that I look at it. Okay. Well, uh, what's your very first example and what world does that live within? Well, I'll start um, with the, the ordinary props because it can be anything that's like, uh, it could be a tanker and the you see somebody drinking and then all of a sudden they <laughs> at the audience. We got a props guy, he's got comic props. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 channeling Gallagher. <laughs> exactly. I love that image, but yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first prop that you brought for us. Well, I was gonna. Oh, yeah. No, the first prop I was. It's it's just a shot of noises off. Okay. And um, it's the sardine plate, and this is definitely one that is another ordinary prop that draws so much comedy through that whole play. And I mean, for those I'm, of us, I mean, I've seen it, but for those of my audience who hasn't seen noises off, what do, what ser service do the sardines? uh give that that's that play they it, it's a it's a prop that keeps drawing action because in our world um so much of our world is about handoffs and receives and what are the what what are the actors carrying and and a lot of the times if if a if a prop is written into the play there's a reason the playwright has put it in there and so it, if it is to draw out a laugh like the sardines do in the show because they're they're on a plate or at times they're spilled and they're causing action there um, or they're um, dropped and somebody's slipping on them and there's drawing action there so it's it's definitely something that you would not think is funny to just look at but then in the setting just is so funny <laughs> And like, and to what you, to what you said, it's a normal thing. Sardines are normal. People eat them and they are a part of people's lives, <laughs> but this normal thing and the setting of noises off becomes elevated and the, and, and the playwright utilized it as a tool to 
explore different worlds of comedy in many different ways, like you mentioned, from slipping to dropping to showing up in weird places. The, the sardines are a wonderful anchor in Noises Off to continue to explore and find fun ways to explore in, in the performance. Exactly. Um, let's move to, to your next example. What else have you got for us? So on the on the other side of that, the the ones that we build that have to have a timing or have to to interact in a comedic way um, are are just as challenging. Um, and one of the first ones that I'm going to show you here is it was um, for the show Imaginary Invalid that we did um, a couple of years back, and it was just it, from when you originally looked at it, it was just an ottoman, and this ottoman. Um, was put built on a lazy Susan so that it could actually spin because there were comedic moments where the actors would lay on it and then get spun. Um, but then the climax of this prop is that it actually opened up and revealed the gates of hell, as we called it, and they sent the main character down into the ottoman and the ottoman kind of swallowed him up. So it was... It was one where you get the ta you get the you get the notes and you're like we have to build what and then <laughs> you see what the actors do with it and you're like this is hilarious. <laughs> is it a collaboration? Would you would you create a prop like that? Is do you find yourself in the development process during the rehearsal because you're working with actors as they use it? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. We. we we built a mock-up and we had to put it on a table just to, we, we collaborated with the director first and then with the actors. And then we had to, in building our prototype, push the actor down the chute <laughs> to see how we were gonna catch him in the trap. And um, if the doors of the ottoman would actually hold up um, to that much repetitive action. So it was, Yes, there was a lot of collaboration with it. And then and then that's that's just with the actors in the prop shop. Then there was adding the lights to it that so that the lights could light up the whole and uh, and that whole interaction, which is a good tie into the next. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look you. at the next prop. Um, it's uh, the, in the show called Meteor Shower um, by Steve Martin. And um, there's a character that gets has a comet basically blown through or a meteor blow through his stomach and he spends the whole show with a hole in his stomach um, but when this event happens he's laying on a lounge chair so the hole goes through him and goes through that lounge chair and so when he stands up we have this perfect hole that's smoking and light is coming from it like the burning embers and so that was a collaboration with lighting that we had to do and sound to get the timing of that. So you made the lawn chair basically, it kind of appear to explode on, on wow. Yeah. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Cause it was, I mean, before that scene, you, everybody looks at it and you're like, oh, that's just an ordinary lawn chair. And then the character lays down and fl lights flash and he gets up and we had to sink that whole part of the ottoman and the ground so that there was a hole <laughs> for the rest of the show. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. that, did it take a while to get the time? That was a tech related it, collaboration. Oh yeah. Yeah, it took a while to get the 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 build and the effects just right for that. Um, what I what I really it. love about this conversation is that there a lot of times in in the world of theater we work at a scarcity place, <laughs> and you get to have the really creative opportunity to take these otherworldly ideas and make the and make them a reality and, and especially in the world of comedy like I personally have seen our props department make some of the most incredible pieces of of comedy happen on stage as these beautiful pieces of craftsmanship I think about it all the time what, what you're all capable of doing um, did you want to share any other examples with us 
Um, yes, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned it because it's it's really the resourcefulness because I mean not every time, not every show will you have a huge budget. So it's really you have to get very creative on how you you make that happen. And and the next slide that I was that um, I'll show you yeah. was for underpants. And so in this show we had <laughs> we had to bring cats and a bird <laughs> to life and then interact with the actors. And so when you're sitting there going, okay, we have to automate five cats and a bird, and they all have to do these things, you're like, oh, this is not a small task. So with the with the cats, we actually were able to purchase like for real cats. So there's these little like um, comfort stuffed animals that have, they react and have a little motor. Um, They're so a, creepy. I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> In real life they're very creepy <laughs> yeah. so it was it was it was interesting because we we had to take that take that creepy factor out of it make them look more real so we actually did do some taxidermy on them they were still <laughs> a little creepy i'm gonna be oh, honest yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that added to the fun but, but then we we had to take simple motors and then like when they were just sitting on the stage um a half an hour before the show started we had their tails just kind of moving or or a paw like just kind of petting itself to make it look like it was grooming um and so each one had its own little characteristic uh, but then the other fun part is that when the actors came on stage they picked these things up and threw them off stage and there was a sound effect of a cat <laughs> screaming <laughs> And that's why we would never have real cats <laughs> ever. <laughs> I don't know I, how you could ever do a Steve Martin show with real animals because it's just not, <laughs> not no. <laughs> it's just not a world where real animals would serve. It. <laughs> oh, not about, I mean, even the bird, the bird is another slide you'll see in this. And that, I mean, the, it's written in the script that the bird caused at certain moments. And and it and it 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 uh, accentuates that that comedy. Like you have somebody saying something and the bird reacting to it, and the other characters then catching on. <laughs> I love your job. <laughs> You've got a great job. I have a surprise question for you, and if you don't know the answer to it, no one will ever see this. We'll edit it out. But if you do know the answer to it, here we are. Um, have you ever had a a, a prop? become comedic in a play maybe I not intentionally because <laughs> i've experienced that and i'm wondering if if oh you've my. ever experienced that Wait, no tell me your experience, first. My experience. That, yeah. well i mean i've i've been in shows where like uh things will fall from the walls in a perfectly timed matter like a, a in suspense um, I've had misplaced props before. I once was, I was once in, I was once in a play where I was supposed, I had a, I had a prop gun and I murdered somebody in the play. And then we went on a lunch break and I came back and the, the gun wasn't there. And instead there was some jam. Somebody left some jam where the gun was. And then I had, I used the jam to kill them instead. I said it was poison jam, uh, but, like, but the, I mean, that's what I think of when props have like gone missing or have like taken on a, a mind of their own. Do you have any experience? Oh, like there's, that? there's, I mean, so many shows that happens and the, the unfortunate times is that it's, it's almost never associated with the comedy. It's always <laughs> with the drama and you're like, oh, like, in a, in a Shakespeare when that gun is supposed to shoot the other character and it doesn't fire or the gun breaks apart and then the actor has to go bang <laughs> it's I mean it's we did a show called murder for two that was a touring show and that one I mean it it there were times where like they would drop a prop because they they have all the it was like kind of a murder mystery and they had all the clue weapons on the wall and um, in all of their physicality, like sometimes they would get tangled up in one and have to use one of the other weapons as <laughs> as a gun or as a 
candlestick. And so it was very free form, but it was, it, it, what's wonderful is when you see an actor really take on the, the comedy of it and then roll with it because, and, and that's, I think that's an important part of having our job, our props in rehearsal is that the actors get comfortable with those props so that they, they, they in their heads can, can figure out other things to do with it. Um, and like, even from the example of, I mean, there's, it's written in the show, but in uh, Forever Plaid, when all those guys are using the um, plungers for one of the singing moments and they come out and they're like, this is the only thing we had. We didn't have microphones and they plop them on the ground and it makes that great sound effect. Um, but then the comedy that ensues with them just carrying those things and dancing with them and poking each other, it's hilarious. And it's just a, a long handled plunger. <laughs> like, and imagining them performing with a plunger instead of a mic is also a lot of fun. Yep. I think that that I think that that's a perfect place for us to to wrap up our conversation today. I wanted to add the element of mis mistake props becoming funny because that might be something to inspire a play of somebody's <laughs> that might inspire someone's work just the element of of dealing with a, a, a material item that goes wrong is a very comedic element <laughs> to explore in writing and could definitely inspire some really really juicy, juicy scenes. But I do want to take a moment to thank you, Dave, for bringing your expertise and your examples. They're a lot of fun. And oh, you're, I, I continue to believe you have the funnest job at the Old Globe. And, you know, thank you so much for being here and sharing inspiration with our participants today. Oh, thank you so much, Katie. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time, Dave. Bye. Hooray! Thank you, Dave. What a treat. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and hear about your really incredibly fun job. <laughs> now we're going to get to help make Dave's job even funnier. And I hope that you're feeling inspired to explore your own comic prop scene uh, and that you're going to get all that inspiration into developing and writing your own piece because we are jumping into our writing prompt for this week. You can find this prompt in this in the link in the episode description and in the comment from the Old Globe in the comment section. This link is going to take you to the prompts for this entire workshop. So if you're new, you can check those out and participate in whichever one you would like to. And for this workshop, you're going to grab the props prompt specifically. That is a mouthful. Uh, and if you can't get there right now, that's okay. Here's what you're going to explore this week. First, I'm asking you to do a lap around your house, your apartment, your bungalow, your bathroom, your bedroom, whatever you feel comfortable. Do a lap and find some of the most unique items that you own and then contemplate them. Feel them, smell them if they're not stinky, and see what inspired you to just pick them up for this moment. And then I want you to pick one of these items for the purpose of this prompt. First, describe it. Describe it as in detail as you feel. Number two, why did you choose this item for this exercise? There's probably a reason why you came to the decision of choosing this item, why? And then finally, for the purpose of this prompt, I want you to choose one of the ideas here to explore in a short scene. You are either going to give this prompt a voice and use this scene to explore this item attempting to get whatever this item wants. There's been a lot of creating uh, human qualities in inanimate objects in film and television, and it's usually very funny. So give this item a voice if that inspires you. Or create an elevated value of this item that forces the characters around it to go to great lengths to have this item or keep this item safe. There's nothing funnier than a bunch of people really, really, really trying to protect a lava lamp or any various item. Or if you are inspired to write a scene centered around a different 
comedic idea or concept, hey, go for it. Props can inspire lots of comedic ideas, and I just want to empower you to run with your own concept. In fact, the previous ideas are just there if you really can't come up with one for your prop at the moment. No worries. And as always, if you really love your scene or if you just want to chat about it, send it to me at kheroff at theoldglobe.org specifically for the chance to be a part of our upcoming Funny Festival in April. I can't wait to read your newest work. It inspires me all the time. And that's it for today. From me and my tiny little hands to you, I'm signing off and saying, see you next time, funny people. Ha, 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 ha. Community Voices. Comedy edition.